Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Retro Muscle. Today's video will be a competition recap of the IFBB's 1980 Florida Grand Prix. But before we begin, I think we need to talk a little bit more about the origin of the Grand Prix circuit. The IFBB's Grand Prix circuit was the brainchild of Physique Productions, which was a small group of bodybuilding promoters. To be specific, Physique Productions was made up of only three people. First, we had Wayne D'Amelia, a well-known bodybuilding promoter from New York. The second member was Karen Clark, who is a bodybuilding photographer and D'Amelia's wife. And the final member of the production team was Charles Blake, who is not only a bodybuilding enthusiast, but he was also the vice president of print and design for NBC. So if we go back to 1976, D'Amelia had just promoted the Eastern America, and this is where Charles Blake is first introduced to Wayne. Not too long after that, Blake and D'Amelia discussed the state of bodybuilding while training at Mid-City Gym. Wayne explained to Blake how he was real ambitious to put on a major show with cash prizes, since there weren't that many competitions at the time doing so. From there, Charles Blake put in a bid to the IFBB Congress so that he could sit on the board of the newly developed pro committee. And this was definitely a smart move because Arnold Schwarzenegger had been appointed as the head of the committee and Blake had many dealings with him before, like working with him through pumping iron, stay hungry. Blake had even helped Arnold promote the 76 Olympia. Okay, so now let's fast forward to 1978. Physique Productions is finally given the opportunity to promote their first major pro show, and that show turned out being the very famous Night of the Champions. The show was an absolute hit with Robbie Robinson taking the title. With the success of the 78 Night of the Champions, Physique Productions were given the opportunity to add two more shows the following year. With three major shows offering cash prizes under the Night of the Champions banner, it was decided at the 79 IFBB Congress that Physique Productions would help organize and promote a circuit of bodybuilding shows called the Grand Prix. The 1980 Grand Prix circuit would consist of five shows with the final one taking place in New York City. Along with cash prizes, all the competitors that place in the top 10 of each show would earn points based on their placing. These points would be tallied up at the final Grand Prix, the Night of the Champions, and the competitor with the most points would be crowned Mr. World and would qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Honestly, I could go on for an hour filling you in with background information, so let's just get right into the first show already. So, we're going to start with the kickoff show, the Florida Grand Prix. Originally, this show was billed to take place on February 17th at the DuPont Plaza Hotel in Miami, but it was eventually moved to the Dade County Auditorium. The contest was sponsored by Da Vinci Labs and promoted by George Prince, and Prince was a former Mr. Southern USA and owner of a health spa in the area. Now, before we get into which competitors were invited out, first I'd like to list off the judges for this show. First, we have the head judge for the entire Grand Prix circuit, and that was Bill Pearl. Our second judge was Richard Baldwin, the 1979 Mr. Florida. Next, we had Roger Schwab, who was a writer for Iron Man magazine. Fourth judge was Ken Neely, who was a promoter based out of Atlanta and a national AAU judge. Fifth on the list of judges was Rafael Guerrero, gym owner and state judge. Next, we had Ernesto Millian, a powerlifting champion. And our final judge was Robert Taylor, who is a pro bodybuilder based out of Florida. Okay, now that we've gotten them out of the way, let's list off the nine competitors who made the trek out to Miami. First, we have Boyer Co., who actually showed up early in the week along with fellow competitors Annabelle Lopez and Carlos Rodriguez. I think that was a smart veteran move to show up early. Not only were they getting their bodies acclimated to the new environment, but it was also a smart business move. These guys made their rounds to the nearby gyms and helped promote the competition on the local news. Anyway, our next competitor that was invited out was the master poser himself, Ed Corney. Next, we have not one, not two, but three former AAU Mr. Americas in this competition. First, we had Casey Viator, who had traveled into town with his training partner, Mike Menser, who cheered him on from the audience. The second Mr. America showing up that day was Chris Dickerson. A few months prior to this show, Dickerson had won the Canada Cup, but prior to that, he hadn't competed in years due to a back injury. And our final Mr. A entering the show, and probably the most surprising, was the phantom Steve Mihalik. Similar to Dickerson, Mihalik hadn't competed for some time, but not because of a bodybuilding-related injury. Actually, in 1976, Mihalik had been invited out to the Olympia to compete, but just a few days prior to the show, he had gotten into a serious car accident with a garbage truck that left him paralyzed from the waist down. With many months of rehabbing, Mihalik stunned everyone when he regained mobility in his legs and started to ease back into training. 
Oh, also, before we move on, as you can see, some of these competitors I've listed weren't technically IFBB pros. Now, according to an article written by Oscar State, each Grand Prix promoter was able to invite any professional or amateur competitor as long as the promoter felt that they were qualified. Okay, now let's move on to our final two competitors in the show, and they were Florida's own Kent Kewen and the giant killer Danny Padilla. Okay, so let's move on to the prejudging. Like I said earlier, the show took place at the Dade County Auditorium on February 17th, which was actually a Sunday. Strange day to have a show, but anyway, the preliminary round started with quarter turns for comparisons, followed by mandatory posing. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find a scorecard for this show, but according to multiple articles I read, Dickerson and Viator both left prejudging with perfect scores of 300. Now, after prejudging concluded, there was a three-hour break before the night show was to begin. Originally, the show was supposed to start back up at 7 p.m., but according to Marilyn Guzman's article, a lot of the returning spectators came back late, pushing back the start time to 7.40. But once everyone was settled back in, a few opening remarks were made and the theater lights dimmed. Finally, the audience was treated to each contestant's individual posing routines, followed by guest poser and former junior Miss America, Stacy Bentley. All right, let's list off our final placings for this show. But before we do, I'd like to bring up the Grand Prix point system that I just touched on before. I know there's, there's too much detail, but I have to get it all out there. Now, according to Oscar State's article that I referenced before, the top 10 competitors would earn points, with first place taking 16 points, all the way down to 10th place earning only one. The only reason I'm even bringing this back up is because, as you can see in the show, there's only nine competitors. I'm to assume everyone earned points this evening, but like I said before, I don't have a scorecard. All right, enough filibustering. On to our top nine. Coming in ninth place was Kent Kewen, who took home $300 for his efforts. It's a shame because while I was researching this show, I found out that Kent had dislocated his shoulder a week before the competition. Kent was unable to train leading up to the show and actually ended up seeing Franco Colombo for treatment in the area. Oh, also another interesting thing I read about Kent was that this was his last show in the IFBB, but not voluntarily. According to Muscle World Magazine, Kent was banned for life from the IFBB for competing in Serge Nabre's Wabba World Cup. Anyway, all right, let's go on to eighth place, and that was New York's Annabelle Lopez, who earned $500 for his placing. So one thing Annabelle has proudly touted throughout the years was that he was a natural competitor who doesn't use steroids. Actually, after he finished his posing routine this night, he shouted out to the audience, No drugs! Which is pretty funny, but he's even claimed to take a blood test if challenged. I wonder if anyone's ever taken him up on that. Regardless, natural or not, Lopez has an admirable physique with great proportions. Okay, now on to our next place. Uh, this one's a little confusing because according to Muscle World magazine, Carlos Rodriguez and Ed Corney tied for sixth place and took home $750 each. Now, unfortunately, all the other articles only list the top five competitors in order, and the rest are just mentioned. But according to the articles that I did find on them, these two competitors looked great, especially for their age. But the crowd felt that Rodriguez should have placed higher. All right, moving on. Coming in fifth place and earning $1,000 was Boyer Co., who came in a bit off. But in one of the articles I found in Muscle and Fitness, Boyer actually explained to the author that he starts off his competitive year very slow, working his conditioning up all the way to the Olympia at the end of the year. So this was kind of expected. Okay, next in fourth place, earning $1,000 was Steve Mihalik, who I personally think looked great, especially knowing what he went through. He had broad shoulders, a tiny waist, but according to some articles, he was a bit rusty with posing, but you can't be surprised with that. All right, moving on to the top three. Coming in third was Danny Padilla. Now, according to multiple articles I read, Padilla was a crowd favorite for his humor on stage, but he ended up sabotaging himself a few days prior to the show. Apparently, he ate two dozen donuts and smoothed out. I'm starting to learn that this is Padilla's Achilles heel. He ended up carving up way too much before shows, ultimately screwing himself over, but he still looked great, and he ended up taking home $2,000 for third. Okay, now let's move on to second place. Earning $3,000 was the massive Casey Viator. According to Menser, Casey had dropped 15 pounds over the past few months and was in the best shape of his life, and I can't disagree. The previous year, only a few months earlier, Casey competed in his first IFBB Pro Show, the Canada Cup, where he placed fifth. 
He was definitely making major improvements and beginning to climb the pro ladder of the IFBB, but just fell short here by one point in the final posing round. Okay, now on to our winner. Coming in first place at the Florida Grand Prix was Chris Dickerson. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Dickerson earned this one. He had phenomenal shape and conditioning that just outclassed everyone on that stage. Now, even though Viator carried more size and definitely looked much bigger, Dickerson had that muscle maturity and just looked harder, not to mention his amazing proportions and phenomenal posing routine. I also read an article where Dickerson claimed that his time off from competing helped him achieve this look. Now, even though he stopped because of a back injury, he never completely stepped away from training. He continued to eat well and train with consistency. In a way, he just quietly was sharpening his sword that entire time. So, with this win at the Florida Grand Prix, Dickerson went home with $6,000 and 16 points, putting him in the lead at the Grand Prix. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and please stay tuned for the next one. Don't forget to share this one with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and if you want more classic bodybuilding content, check out my Instagram page, at RetroMuscleMags.